This is Craig with Karshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to work through the second set of practice tasks for Objective 4.2 for the Microsoft Office Excel Expert 2016 Study Guide. Let's get started. So in this case, we're going to again work from the Invoices tab in our workbook, so the Invoices worksheet. We are going to create a pivot table, and at this time I'm going to use my keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to hit Alt, N, and V to get a pivot table. Um, the table and range are correct. The new worksheet we want is correct. We will hit OK. We need to rename this worksheet. And before I showed you how just to double click, that's one option. Uh, the second option is to, with our mouse, go into Home, Format, Rename Sheet. So that is our second option. And this time I'm going to name this by category. And we'll move on to the next thing to practice. So in this case, they want us to summarize the value in the quantity field by both country as the row and category field as the column. All right, so the first thing we know we want is quantity field. So I'm going to search that. There's quantity. And we want our quantity summarized. The next thing we want is our row value, and that is country. So there's country region. We'll put it into the rows here. So now our total quantity sold to each of these countries shows up here's uh, Argentina. There was 94 units sold, Belgium 516, etc. Now they want us to also break that up into the category field. So let's type in category. And we are going to move that into the column section here of our workbook or of our pivot table. So there we go. So now for each country, we can break down. Here's the number of beverages sold, condiments, confections, etc. through the different categories. We do have our grand total here on the right hand side, which is effectively the sum of all of those values there. We can confirm that that the sum matches, um, which isn't surprising, but it's just a way of double checking. Next, they would like us to switch the row and column. So let's uh, switch the row and column fields. And I'm just going to do that by dragging. So I'm going to grab my category, drive it, drag it to rows, and then country into the columns. So this is the same data as before. It's just organized. I pivoted it, essentially. So now I have my category of product here. So now beverages, and now it breaks it up by country. Uh, again, if I summarize all of these, and so yeah, there's my sum, 39.96. Sure enough, it matches to what's up here. All right, next, they would like us to create a timeline slicer. Now, I, I love slicers, and if you haven't used them before, I suspect after learning how to use them here um, that you will find many opportunities to use them. So in this case, we're going to go into Analyze, which is part of our contextual tab for the pivot table. And in here, there are two different uh, slicer groups. One is a regular slicer, um, and the second is a timeline slicer. So in this case, timeline slicers are a little bit special, and we are going to insert our timeline slicer by clicking there. And we have been instructed to use it based on order date. Now what's happened here is Excel has looked into this invoices table and it has identified three different columns that have date values. So what it's asking us to do is just, hey, which which date do you want me to group this by? So we've been specified for our order date and we'll click OK. All right, so here is our slicer. Uh, and as I mentioned, I love slicers. Slicers quickly let us segregate the specific data that we're interested in. So in this case, this slicer shows all the periods in the timeline starting in January 2016 all the way to December 2017. However, if I want to know what happened in May of 2016, all I need to do is click on that single button. So now the value in this table is updated just to include the sales 
that were made in May of 2016 and nothing else. Now if I want a longer period, I can drag this. So now there's three months from March through May. I can drag the other end and make it a little bit longer as well. The other thing that we can do is, first off, I'll show you by clearing the filter. I now get all of my time periods back. But the other thing, right now it's broken into months. I can say, no, I, w I just want to see it by years. So here's my 2017. Here's my 2016. Or quarters. All right, so there's for 2016, all my quarters. Back into months, where I was before. And lastly, I could do it by days. Now, this is probably way more granular than I would normally want to see, but I can look up January 19th, no sales. 16th, okay, perfect, we have some sales there. So this is a timeline slicer. Uh, you can create other slicers in Excel to segregate by other categories. So for example, I could have these categories uh, as part of my slicer. Click a button, it'll only show me confections. One nice thing is that you, you can now use slicers uh, in regular tables and not just pivot tables. And I have one of my two minute to master videos that is on table slicers. So if you thought slicers were cool, make sure you check that out. I'll put a link here at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. That wraps up all the practice tasks for this section. We'll have one more video in this practice objective that'll wrap up the last of pivot tables in preparation for your exam. Thanks for watching. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory.